Hey, what is up everyone? It's David here. If you're in the startup community, Airtasker is by far one of the most mentioned names. And in my opinion, they are one of our proudest treasures here in Australia because they're one of the rare few who made it to the point where they can go public. So congratulations to the Airtasker team and Tim Fong because getting to the IPO stage is like a distant dream for a lot of startups. In this video, I wanna go through Airtasker's perspectives share some of my thinking around it and let me get the boring stuff out of the way no i'm not a professional and this video is not financial advice or recommendation for you to do anything it's just general information for entertainment purposes to line up your day a little bit more the way i've structured my thinking around individual companies is product team and price it doesn't have to be in that particular order but i like to start with the product evaluating the team helps me think about execution risk and the price helps me gauge expected returns in the future First, let's talk about the product. Airtasker is a platform that connects people who want tasks completed with people who can complete tasks. And these tasks could be plumbing, it could be cleaning, and majority of the interactions are done via their mobile app. The upside to a double-sided marketplace like Airtasker is that they're known to have inherent network effects where more customers attract more independent workers because these workers don't want to miss out on those customers. And then as there are more independent workers, it attracts more customers. So it's a virtuous cycle. On top of that, this kind of business model is very capital efficient because traditionally for a company to service their customers, they have to incur cost of goods sold, delivery costs, transaction costs. But in Airtasker's case, the cost of goods sold and delivery cost is with the independent workers. So the only cost that they have to incur is transaction costs. That's why the gross margin is north of 90%. More on that in just a second. But the downside to a service-based marketplace is that one, services are really complicated because the way you describe one thing could mean completely different thing to another person. So organizing the relevant information on the website could be challenging. The measure of success, especially for services, are very subjective. And sometimes getting the job done is just not good enough. And three, there is the issue of stickiness. How do you incentivize the taskers to stay on the platform and not take your customers offline? And how do you encourage the customers to come back and put more tasks on Airtasker's platform? On top of all of that, there is the challenge of balancing demand and supply side dynamics because having too much of either side would increase the probability of customers leaving your platform. If that's not hard enough, the supply side, which is the people who can complete tasks, needs to be within proximity for the demand side. Because having cleaners in Sydney is not very helpful if majority of your jobs are in Melbourne. The good thing is Airtasker wouldn't be able to go public if they haven't already found ways to address some of these issues. So let's talk about it. Interpretation of services might be difficult to organize but that's something, in my opinion, can be solved with a 47% engineering workforce. On a separate note, the engineering team have done some gangster growth strategies in the past. I don't know if I can share that here, but from my encounters with early employees, tech seems to be at the heart of Airtasker. Now, while the success of service business is subjective and the delivery of servers is somewhat out of Airtasker's control, they have introduced tiered service fees to incentivize the right behaviors. As people earn more on the platform, Airtasker will actually reduce the amount of service fees they take, which is a pretty incredible incentive. At the same time, they have expanded their review system to include a completion rate, which is kind of like a reliability score. And there are additional badges you can earn on the Tasker's profile, like police check, working with children check, electrical licenses, etc. All of the above will help people completing tasks to build a personal brand on the platform. Ultimately, over time, they'll be able to increase the price they charge on the tasks, further incentivizing people to stay on the platform. To give the taskers another reason to not take transactions offline, they have introduced instant booking and subscriptions to their offerings, making the life easier for both people who want to book tasks and also people completing the tasks. My question is, is all of that enough to keep people on the platform? So far, the percentage of returning customers, which is this red bar, is growing quite steadily. So that's a great signal that customers are coming back for more. But personally, still, I don't know if that's enough to keep people on the platform, especially when Airtasker goes up against global players like TaskRabbit in the UK. 
The total addressable market for local services here in Australia, according to the IPO prospectus, is $52 billion. And the thing about marketplaces is that it's generally winner takes most. That's because if majority of people are going to a particular platform for tradie related services, then majority of the tradies will be on that platform because they don't want to miss out on any of the customer flow. I've put some strong competitors next to each of the categories. Of course, there are more of them out there. And I will argue that most are actually ahead of Airtasker in their vertical. And the good thing about some of these marketplaces focusing on a vertical, like for example, tradies, is that they can build the best possible experience around that niche. And then they can expand into more value added service for their customers, both expanding the customer lifetime value and also create new revenue streams. In Airtasker's IPO prospectus, they've also mentioned total addressable market by country as well. But frankly, I just completely ignore the US total addressable market because with the amount of venture capital and also public equities invested in marketplaces like Uber, Airbnb, DoorDash, Thumbtack, and TaskRabbit, entering US would just burn so much capital and you still wouldn't make a dent. But countries with fragmented markets, undecided winners, like for example, Ireland, New Zealand, Singapore, UK, I think in those countries, I'm really excited to see what Airtasker can do in those countries. As a matter of fact, in 2018, Airtasker actually raised $35 million from some West media to launch in UK. And they did say in their perspectives that majority, well, 99% of Airtasker's revenue come from Australia with the remaining 1% from UK. I don't want to be too critical here because marketplaces are inherently difficult. So I'd love to hear more from Tim about the kind of progress they're making on international expansion. Even ignoring the US market, the total addressable market for Airtasker is north of $100 billion. And they plan to grow and scale via three avenues. The first avenue is growth marketing. And that's essentially the digital stuff. SEO, content marketing, performance marketing, which is like Facebook and Google ads. And then you have Airtasker Superstore, which is essentially enabling people to create predefined packages and sell them. So, so that could be baking you amazing Brazilian desserts, car washes, plan your date nights. And lastly, they also mentioned that they want to scale and grow via international expansion. Okay, let's look at some numbers before we get into the team and price. The best graph that I saw on the Airtasker perspectives is their cost curve when it comes to acquiring new paying customers. I thought I was high as a kite when I saw a dollar per new paying customer which is 25 times lower than the first half of 2019 financial year. That kind of customer acquisition cost give Airtasker a lot of margin to invest into other things to grow faster if they can keep their customer acquisition costs that low. Digging deeper into the numbers, the gross margin is stupidly high at 93%. Revenue is growing and the average task value is also growing but the frequency is staying the same. And I wonder if that's just a natural plateau. But at this point, with a customer acquisition cost at $1, the frequency doesn't even matter. The trouble is that because Airtasker have no earnings and you really don't expect a growth company to have any earnings because they are reinvesting that money into growing faster, a high bond yield environment is going to have a downward pressure on the valuation. The good news is that they are forecasting a positive operating cash flow for the 2021 financial year, but we'll see how things go. Okay, let's talk about the team. This is still a co-founder led team. And even though I haven't had the chance to personally meet Tim, a good friend and a mentor of mine who is an early, early Airtasker employee have told me plenty of stories about Tim. The impression I got is that you honestly couldn't ask for someone more committed to the company. And if you've been following me, I personally have a preference for co-founder led companies because if you ever work for a startup, you'll see firsthand that there is absolutely not one person that will outwork the co-founder. For the rest of the management team, the CFO and the general counsel came from investment banks and the COO spent 10 years in Google working across search, YouTube and Google Maps. Talk about having a cheat code to Google. From a product point of view, personally, I just don't like horizontal service-based marketplaces. But in terms of execution risk, the talent firepower is definitely there and I don't think they have any problem attracting talent. But the question for me still is whether they can scale the marketplace fast enough to win. Okay, let's look at the price of Airtasker. Now, when it comes to Airtasker's valuation, I went for a more relative approach and I chose High Pages Group and also Freelancer.com because all three of them are relative in sizes. With Airtasker, based on the historical information, 
I've given them a 30% compounded annual growth rate for their revenue. It's pretty conservative, but I think it's relatively fair. They've also mentioned that they have 392 million shares outstanding. So at a 65 cents debut, they'd be trading at approximately nine times the 2021 sales, 10 times their 2021 gross profit, and about seven times their 2022 revenue, and about 8.9 times their 2022 gross profit. Now, if we look at this comps table here, Airtasker is leading the crowd with a higher gross margin, higher compounded annual growth rate, but it's worthwhile to bear in mind that high pages, their 2021 estimated revenue is 54 million. That's literally double what Airtasker is doing and they're still growing at 15% at a much smaller multiple. At this point, I generally like to ask myself, given the product, given the team, given the price, given the macro conditions, do I think this company will three to five X my money in the next five years? And frankly, because I'm a little bit more reserved towards service-based horizontal marketplaces, I'm just going to add Airtasker onto my watch list and then study some more. So thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. If you want to support the channel, not to mention access to additional content pieces and be part of my fortnightly Q&A, consider supporting the channel via Patreon. Nevertheless, if you have learned something new, remember to gently smack the like button right there, subscribe to my channel so that when I release future videos, you be the first one to know. Until next time, my name is David. Otto will always do the honors and see you very, very soon.